Maestro, thank you very much for accepting this little interview. It's the first day of our tour, of your tour, with the Orchestre Nationale de France, and the first station will be here in Zurich at the Tonhalle. We are in Migros Kulturplatz and Classics. This is the former Clubhouse concerts, and we're very proud and very happy that you have accepted to come to us. Thank you very much in advance. It's very special for us because it's also the first time that you are on tour here with us. The orchestra has been in 91 for the last time on tour, and you have chosen a very special program. You're coming with French repertoire. My first question, Maestro, is what does it mean to you personally, or how do you, would you describe the French music? What is so special about it in comparison to others? Well, it's not easy to, to describe shortly. Mm. This kind of uh, style. Um, every composer has a, a diversity, of course, and a different sensitivity. And above all, we are just presenting the end of the century and uh, the beginning of the, the 20th century of uh, the French repertoire. There is no Berlioz uh, in this repertoire. And uh, more on that, uh, uh, the program of this evening is made uh, uh, mainly on the second half of the program with Debussy and Ravel, which are the two major composers of the 20th century in French music in a way, probably except the, 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 the modern composer of French, uh, Boulez, uh, Dautilleux, Messiaen. Uh, but before the war, I mean, uh, no doubt that Debussy and Ravel was the leading composer of, of France and uh, presenting two pieces that are, to my opinion, two different fortunes. In one way, Jeu, which has uh, so rare performances uh, in concert. Uh, he born like a ballet for the Aguilef and it's the last composition of Debussy. But it's the last Debussy, it's very cryptic in a way and um, immensely difficult for the orchestra. I don't know why he has not in front of the audience the same fortune that the other Equis symphonique or ballet music that we see written. Probably because, uh, as I said before, his cryptical language and the form made by very short phrases and uh, parentheses and brackets uh, uh, give to the to the to the piece uh, um, a sort of enigma, in a way, a musical enigma. In a way, yeah. It's uh, at the end, uh, uh, it's quite has quite an impact. But it sounds like a, a, a modern piece. The solution, harmonic solution, the orchestration is really beyond the point as everybody knows about the Debussy music. No, it's not anymore the, the mood of the Debussy of the Prelude de la Première d'Enfant, or La Mer, or Nocturne. It's just something beyond. On the other side, uh, uh, Daphne and Claude, the second suite, is one of the most important and famous composition. And uh, this is also, in a way, a showpiece for, for his uh, strengths uh, and uh, his virtuosity for the orchestra, because it's so for this reason, the second half, uh, we decided to, to bring two, two pieces in contrasting between them, but uh, enormously important for, uh, for the music, for the history of music of France. On the other side, the first half is more intimate, if we can say that, with the, the suite uh, from the four pieces from uh, Pelea Mélisande. Uh, um, for by Fauré this time, Fauré. Yes, not by Debussy. Not by Debussy. <laughs> Uh, or better not by Schoenberg, or <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> you know, for the concert, and the concerto for cello on the orchestra with uh, Maestro Menezes. Uh, it's, um, it's more small in a way, in, with the intimacy character, which also music, French music has a lot. This chamber music character, in yes, a way. Yes, yes. There is a noblesse in the music of Fauré, uh, sort of elegant side, a uh, taste uh, of that. I accumulates sometimes his, his way, his, uh, his taste to the, the taste of Edgar in, in England. So this is just this noblesse in the music. Uh, 
uh, in, this, in the small proportion to not in, in the big proportion. We can say probably with a, of course the, all, all the respect that the French music uh, has a differences between the itself and and, uh, and, the, and the German music, in German tradition, mainly for the form. The, 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 the tradition of the symphony is from the country of Germany and Austria. Uh, in France there is less this kind of tradition. This is more uh, ikis, more tableau. More sketches, in yes. a way. Yes, maybe more poetical in a in a in a certain way, yeah. more a certain French elegancy, maybe which goes yes. through and the pieces. Uh, and of yeah. course, a, a, a particular a develop uh, the orchestration. Berlioz was the first one. It's, it's influenced Wagner too, yes. to begin to to explore uh, uh, potentially in uh, in sound of an orchestra with uh, new effect. And it was the beginning of well, 18, 1830 with the uh, Symphony Fantastique, with, Symphony Fantastique yes. with, with, with particularly technique. And then he influenced all the com European composers for that. What is then particular about a French orchestra? I mean, you are an Italian maestro. Um, it's a little bit maybe easy to say that an Italian, not being French yourself, looks maybe through other eyes and listens to other ears this music and interprets this music maybe differently. Do you think that this is important nowadays to have different interpretations by different people and not to say this is standard and it should be like this? Do you think that this really My counts God, nowadays? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think the music is written for everybody and uh, permit me to say that otherwise it's also possible for us to say this music is, goes just for the Germans or this music goes <laughs> just for the French because they are more elected to, to, to understand. No. Um, I come from, from a country where I think the, the tradition of con great conductors is so high, starting from Toscanini. And even, even before him with Maestro Angelo Mariani yes. at the Verdi time or Franco Faccio, Mariani was the first conductor who built Wagner in Italy. The first the opera of Wagner yes. was conducted by him. And uh, Toscanini, which is uh, our great father in conducting, he was uh, renewed to be more than an con Italian conductor, as an international conductor. Absolutely. His Beethoven lessons, or Brahms, or Wagner. Uh, he had ordered probably more Wagner than Verdi, despite he met personally Verdi. But uh, uh, e oh, even today, if we talk about Toscanini, we recall immediately not just Verdi, yes. but Beethoven, Brahms, Strauss, Wagner. So it's quite, uh, it's quite hard no, to think that an Italian maestro, typical Latin maestro, has, a so, has a, this great feeling with this music. And then the Sabata, Cantelli, Ma Giulini, and all the maestros that now are still uh, alive, uh, I think, uh, mm, without forgive the nature of uh, Italianity, and so they were excellent and great in, rep in Italian repertoire. Someone preferred to do less Puccini and more Verdi, someone else does more Puccini than, rather than Verdi, but uh, nobody of them, or maybe it may say nobody of us, is just re refused to, to conduct Italian repertoire. But uh, uh, I think the, the Italian tradition left a, a really very important mm, trademark on the, on the performance of the, the, the French repertoire or better, the German repertoire. I don't know why, but it's like that. Do you think maybe because you mentioned Toscanini, you mentioned the Sabato, you mentioned Giulini and others, and of course yourself, Maestro, um, is this because maybe Italian maestros have following have been following this operatic career next to the symphonic repertoire, uh, maybe more than in other countries, which has given to you maybe something which is, and that's my next question, what does it give you more, what is the exchange of doing both things? Because not all of your colleagues are doing as much opera as you're doing. Um, well, the, the German tradition does more than the German tradition. Uh, mostly of the conductor comes from a tradition the that is 
even different from our tradition because in Germany there is the tradition of the Kapellmeister. Yes. And Mahler itself was a Kapellmeister. So Mahler, Bruno Walter, Otto Klemperer, um, Karajan and, and all Yes, and absolutely. So in Aachen he was actually yes. a second concept. And he, he, con he was a uh, Kapellmeister for, for 25 years. So uh, all the great conductors, I have to, to say that, uh, as you said, uh, were able to combine the two experiences, the theatrical, lyrical experience and the symphonic experience. And then we cannot say that these maestros are specifically great in one repertoire or in one genre. Um, the lyrism... Yes, I'm, the human I'm, voice. Yeah. I, I'm, I think that the, the combination of uh, the structure, the artic architectonical vision of the, the music, combined with the lyrism, it could offer to the audience uh, um, a particular experience in front of an interpretation, which uh, an interpretation is not made by just the right tempo. What is the right tempo at the end? Anyhow, yes. Uh, or the right balance, but it's also passed through the choose of the color, passed through the choose of an, an articulation in the orchestra. So is how to explain, uh, how to talk to the audience. For that reason, I'm less interested today of the so-called the sound of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. Often people ask me, what you can say about the color? Is this orchestra has a sound? The others, yes, okay, yeah. Thanks God, yes. <laughs> but at the end, I'm still interested at what an, a performance could say, what an interpretation could say. Because when I began to listen a concert, in two minutes, I'm just forgiving. What's uh, yes. What is this? Uh, forgetting, sorry, not forgetting, forgetting. I have not, nothing to forgive to the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> to forgetting. What is, uh, um, what is a sound? I'm much more uh, touched by an interpretation idea. Um, and then if the sound the orchestra is supporting this view, so I can say I'm in front of a really rave concert. If they understand you, if they understand your concept, the musicians, and in this sense, do you think you mentioned someone like Toscanini? It were, of course, different times, or Furtwängler, or Klemper, or Karian, even. Um, has it changed now, or is it possible for a conductor like you, Maestro, to impose a certain idea or a certain color on an orchestra, um, as it was maybe a little bit uh, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years ago, or is it more become a dialogue between your ideas and maybe the possibilities of the orchestra and maybe sometimes also ideas coming from the orchestra? Is it more a dialogue nowadays, the work between a conductor and an orchestra to reach what you said? Uh, do you think it is more than that compared yeah, to before? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's like that. It's not totally like that, probably. We, we can say that an orchestra is the result of uh, um, a legacy which is, comes from the school of, of a country. So the Italian school of uh, uh, strings or uh, the woodwind instruments is completely different from the school uh, in French. Uh, the brass school in, in America or in England is different from the brass school in Italy. And uh, in Germany, they have a, a, another kind of color or another kind to approach the brass or the woodwind. So all of that can give to the orchestra a special, a special and natural color. But uh, the musicians are also addressed during the study year to change and to modulate. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as an orchestra is very sensitive and with uh, a palette of uh, technical um, chance, uh, a conductor could uh, could fish from that and and to say we can try. I I do also with my orchestra here when we are doing the German repertoire. So sometimes I really understand that we are on the limit because my, the sound I have I have in my mind is maybe darker 
respect the sound that the orchestra could offer to me. Uh, I can stay in the limits that the orchestra proposed to me. Otherwise, I have to change completely yes. the nature of the orchestra. In this case, uh, we are talking just a, a little balance. In France, for instance, we have uh, the bassoon, which is the bassoon. But it's called bassoon. bassoon. And uh, fagotte. Fagotte, bassoon. Right? And uh, just this example, that because the Rite of Spring, Stravinsky, was composed for a French yes. orchestra. And especially the, the beginning, made with a French orchestra, and this color of the bassoon is really different. Respect the, 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 the same beginning with a, a fagotte, uh, which is a little bit darker, a little bit uh, less transparent rather than, uh, than French bassoon. So it's a completely different color. But yeah, we yeah. talk about a minimal difference, not an enormous difference. Which is not often really heard by a larger amount of the public if, and yeah. the listeners. But if the, the, the bassoonist has a feeling with this kind of instrument and he is able to, to begin. And then, if we listen, Stravinsky was quite direct. Sometimes, other, other, um, especially with the French orchestra, we, we like to start with this solo with a lot of mystery. And uh, what is the truth? To listen to how Stravinsky did it, or maybe also to find if behind the notes there, are, there is hidden something different, because that was still Stravinsky in the, in the Russian period of his life. It was not so straight Evidence, uh, yes. and, 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 and squared and anti-romantic like, like afterward. So there are many things which come together. I mean, would you also subscribe something which uh, uh, Georges Prêtre was saying about himself? Um, I asked him once in an interview if he felt himself like being a great conductor, and he said, actually, he doesn't feel being a conductor, he feels like an interpreter. And to him, it was a big difference. Um, can you comment? I mean, would you also subscribe this? Yes, I subscribe that, and I would like also that uh, the audience could judge a conductor without seeing him. A lot of time we are under the judgment of the public because the charisma of the, 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 the position of the conductor is so attractive and also so disturbing. I conducted four years in Bayreuth yes. and that was the best. Because <laughs> one cannot experience. see you. <laughs> yes. Just listen. Just listen. I also understand that uh, uh, a superficial side of the music is also important. So, I mean, uh, the right of that, the, to see the musician play, yes. to see the, the, the movement of a conductor that could help the music to be more comprehensive. But I quote totally the fact that uh, an interpreter is uh, mainly uh, uh, to be interpreted is the main mission for, for me. And then I can do through the conducting, through conducting, and, uh, because I, I, feel, I feel very good on it. I, I feel in my natural elements. Thank you very much, Maestro, for sharing this Thank very you. precious thoughts with us. Thank you very and much. And I wish you great success tonight and for the, all the coming concerts. Thank you, very kind. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Maestro.